Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. Tesla's electric cars sure are profitable, but even that looks small when compared to the potential of FSD, which in itself is dwarfed by the potential of robo-taxis. Tesla still has all these future massive industries that they're trying to enter once they can make enough cars, and the software in the cars is to a high enough standard. Now, although electric cars are meant to be great for the environment, a lot of them still run on coal. The energy used to charge the batteries has to come from somewhere, and if it's coming from the grid, then it's likely from gas or coal. Now, yes, it's still supposedly better for the environment than ICE cars, but it was also a necessary step in the transition of renewables. Electric cars had to be powered by some means. There aren't enough renewables yet. But Tesla was a car company first, before they decided to get into energy with the acquisition of Solar City. Why didn't Tesla start out as an energy company first? Why didn't Tesla start making solar panels and battery storage instead of cars? Well, for starters, remember Tesla was a tiny company with only tens of millions of dollars in seed money. It had to start lean and small and with as minimal losses as possible on a shoestring budget. So Tesla started with the higher end, more profitable products in smaller markets that didn't need massive economies of scale to compete. And we know how that went. But now Tesla is putting even more pressure on the grid for energy due to consumers now needing to charge their vehicles and their vehicles require an extra 20 megawatts of energy each year to run. And all right, Tesla is in the energy industry with battery storage and solar, but let's face it, this business has not been scaled to any noticeable level and certainly not to the extreme. The extreme, that is where Elon tells us he wants to take Tesla, of which I kind of infer a you ain't seen nothing yet kind of attitude coming. This extreme scaling is accompanied with a number equating to a total of 300 terawatt hours of battery cells to be produced in order to reach a global sustainable renewable energy. So that is the target, but that number really means very little when we start talking about what is actually required to take out of the ground. For example, every ton of pig iron processed requires two tons of ore, also a ton of coke and half a ton of limestone. Just to start giving you a rough idea of what is required here, and perhaps one ton is enough iron for LFP batteries for three or four EVs. Anyway, long story short, I shouldn't need to explain why this extreme scaling is not going to be done with nickel batteries. But basically for energy storage, energy density is not as big a factor as these batteries are not going to be used in transport. Therefore, we can use larger, heavier, lower cost batteries. And these batteries will be made from abundant materials. They have to be made from abundant elements or else there simply won't be enough minerals to physically make the things. And of course, the more abundant elements are, then usually the less they cost. Therefore, Tesla's extreme scaling with energy storage will be using iron-based LFP cells in their batteries. Now, to be clear, yes, it is possible that Tesla might also opt for a sodium iron electrode. We don't know yet. Sodium being another alkali metal with ions that behave in similar way. But perhaps sodium is about as far down as you want to go, as the alkali metals tend to get a lot more reactive, perhaps dangerous for a cell. If you can perhaps recall high school chemistry and putting alkali metals in water, but I may also need a refresh in some chemistry to go any further there. Elon has actually suggested Tesla using two different form factors for LFP, and as he also says something like two thirds of vehicles will eventually use LFP cells, one might be forgiven for thinking there'll be one LFP form factor for vehicles and another for energy storage. So when is Tesla going to scale to the extreme? When is energy going to really start pumping out? I know people are expecting energy to take Tesla to the next level again, and some expect it soon. The thing is, Tesla is not a software company, it's manufacturing, and it takes a lot longer to build a production line than it does code an app. Not to mention the largest level of production the world has ever seen, so it will take time. And bear in mind that Tesla delivered battery day about two years ago now, and still to this date, we don't have the 4680 cell in volume production. And on battery day, they even showed the manufacturing at Cato Road and to the level they were already at, perhaps after one year's experimenting. And on top of that, this was in addition to purchasing the likes of Maxwell Technologies and High Bar Systems. A lot, and I mean a serious amount of effort, time, resources, and pain has gone into the manufacturing of the 4680 cell to date, as it should, as it's going to see some serious production. But do you see how long this has taken and they're still barely in production? All resources are still focused on 4680 ramping and then it will be new 4680 factories to ramp up from there. They'll be too busy to set up LFP factories as well. It would likely come at a cost of a 4680 factory. 4680 factories are going to be a lot more profitable than LFP factories. 
If it's an opportunity cost of a 4680 factory, then surely Tesla would make another 4680 factory. Anyway, my point being, I don't think Tesla will have any LFP factories this half of the decade. And then of course, once they do have factories, it will take years to build up multiple factories with high volume run rates, along with a pilot facility to start. Therefore, I don't expect to see energy really start to ramp up until the second half of this decade. We would have already needed to see the cell in test production otherwise. I know Tesla has this target of three terawatt hours of cells a year to produce by 2030. And this was somewhat split up as half energy and half vehicles. But that didn't necessarily mean it would be moving equally as fast. It might even be possible that by the time Tesla is at a one terawatt hour a year run rate just with nickel and possibly manganese cathode cells for 4680, that the energy business may only still be at about 100 gigawatt hours a year, perhaps around 2027 or so. And these LFP cells probably won't even be in-house. CATL and BYD are going to be Tesla's LFP suppliers for some time. What with being in China, meaning that they can set up factories so much faster with minimal regulation, along with many other various manufacturing advantages that China offers, that they are able to manufacture a high quantity of LFP cells at relatively low cost. However, for most businesses, being able to make more of your product isn't usually the struggle, it's finding customers. So it may be all very well that China can make a massive amount of batteries, but it's another thing finding customers who can actually consume that quantity of cells. There are very few, as despite these cells being the lowest cost in the world for EVs, well, they still aren't cheap enough to make a profit for any EV OEM. Well, except for the Wuling, but they only put about 10 kilowatt hours of sales in each car. So it's hardly going to add up. So it only leaves Tesla. Tesla have created a company that can consume LFP sales and put them into a product that has a profit. Tesla also happens to have unlimited demand for this product in any realistic sense of supply coming close to said demand. This therefore gives China the opportunity to continue to ramp up and ramp up their battery production to continue to be the largest cell manufacturer on the planet. However, Tesla are still limited by the amount of cells even the Chinese can make. Tesla can ramp up their production faster and build additional factories quicker than BYD and CATL can make EV cells combined. And all of this is even without using structural battery packs or added silicon at the cathode level. China has massive targets of production capacity for LFP cells. Tesla will purchase the majority of those. And although they'll be used for energy, the majority will likely be used in vehicles still. Although these LFP cells cannot be structural, I said cells, not battery pack. You see, it's the 4680 cells that are the structure. It's cell to vehicle integration where the magic is happening. BYD and even the Ford Mach-E had structural battery packs, but what is inside said battery pack? A lot of structure still that the 4680 cells remove. Obviously CATL nor BYD cells could serve as structure. And that is where the major weight saving happens. Tesla's energy also carries potential software services, similar to Tesla's transport business. Tesla will use AutoBidder in order to even out supply and demand of power. However, it will likely serve as an AI arbitrage system, controlling supply, demand, and pricing in real time to manage energy use. And like robo taxis for transport, AutoBidder has the most exciting potential for energy. I think energy will start to ramp up now, but not in a major way. CATL and BYD are planning on ramping their cell production solely for Tesla. Tesla's most profitable appropriation for each cell is in vehicles. Anything in energy is simply at a loss of not selling those cells in a vehicle. Tesla's energy business carries a net loss, whereas its auto business carries massive profits. Tesla does also intend on building their energy business too, and eventually the Chinese cell companies will be supplying some huge quantities of LFP cells. In a year or two, Tesla can start using about 10 times the amount of cells they have now to deploy in energy. Although this will be a lot more energy storage deployed than today, it will still be insignificant relative to the amount of cells in vehicles and the amount of energy cells that are actually required, although it should be generating a net profit soon enough. If Tesla continue to use LFP cells, especially compared to when they were using 2170 cells for energy storage. Energy is a fantastic product that clearly has massive money saving qualities to users. Tesla just need to be able to make their energy storage profitably and the massive amounts of profits that we're used to seeing from Tesla likely won't come until they make their own in-house LFP cell. The reality is though, for energy, there's nothing major coming for years. So it's not really where to focus too much of our own energy. Like I always say, in the near term, all that matters is 4680 cells and how fast they ramp. And like I say, that alone will take the stock price to $3,000 by 2025 pre-split price, assuming our usual caveat of the economy remaining intact. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.